All right, so let me tell you what I'm doing. First, welcome back to the channel. You're at that 1870s homestead, and I am Rachel. And we are in our winter chicken coop, and I use this for primarily compost making. Um, all the kitchen scraps, garden scraps, the, uh, yard scraps come in here. Um, deep clean out from the winter from the chicken coop comes in here. Leaves fall every fall. As you can see, there's tons of debris, sticks and everything that break down over time. And that little contraption that you saw me using is a compost sifter that Todd built me a few years ago. Love it, works great. And I just harvested a couple five gallon buckets of absolutely beautiful finished compost. And we are gonna be making some adult mud pies. <laughs> And I, did you make mud pies when you were growing up? I know I did, I love it. Um, I loved playing in dirt and making up my own concoctions, putting flowers in it and sticks and stuff. But we're specifically making a compost slurry to use um, for some amendments when we plant out my transplants. I'm gonna be planting out my tomatoes in two days and I'm gonna be uh, adding this. This is the first year I've done it, but I think it's pretty rock solid evidence what it's gonna to do to support um, healthy soil exposure and root inoculation and all the good stuff. So I'm gonna show you what I learned about making this. We're gonna make it together today and I'm gonna let it sit for the next two days out in the garden um, and just get nice and healthy and active and uh, be ready for transplanting day. So hopefully I have enough. I might actually sift just a bit more just to make sure if I have too much, I can always pour some off. Might not have to, there's tons that just fell out the sides of my sifter. Okay, so to each one of these buckets, I have a pint jar of warm milk um, with about two tablespoons of molasses. I'm going to be pouring half in one bucket and then half in the other. And this will just kickstart um, all that good microbial life in there. We'll give it something to eat and get really happy and excited. And then we're gonna add water and mix it up till it's about the thickness of pancake batter. The gentleman, I don't remember the channel I watched this on. Can't remember even, oh, he was using it as um, his mix to inoculate seeds with and I know other people use it um, for inoculating roots. Like, so I'll do this for my strawberry slips that I'll plant out. Um, I'll just dip the roots in this before I put them in the ground. Um, and then others use it as a feeding, a kickstarter to compost piles. So, Okay, I think that's really good. Looks just like pancake batter. Nailed it. Let me show you. Actually, I can just probably scoop some up. So, nice slurry mix. Pour it in. Should pour right out. So the plan is to probably give um, half of one of these uh, pint jars per plant when I plant them out. Well, while we're out here, I have a couple more chores to do. I am going to be spraying on my beneficial nematodes and uh, prepping the green bean beds where the green beans are gonna be planted. So let me get set up for that and I'll talk you to you guys a little bit more while I'm doing those couple chores. Uh, a lot of people have been asking where I buy it, bought it from, it's Arbico Organics. 
and I bought just one variety. Um, they have all kinds of different ones. I just bought the ones that are uh, for things that I deal with. Pill bugs, Japanese beetles, uh, the carrot rot maggot fly or whatever that's called. Um, cabbage worms, horn worms. And the variety is Neem Seek. Interesting. Not quite sure. Oh, this is just a cold pack. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Interesting. And this covers up to, I think, um, a lot. It covers my entire garden. So actually, I need to put this back in the refrigerator. If you do order this, you need to store it in your fridge till use. Preferably only up to two weeks. I have had it a little bit longer than that. Um, so I'm gonna have to just do this. But all I have is one of those um, attachments that go on the end of your sprayer of your hose. And I think um, I should be able to fill this, put it in the sprayer hose and walk around and do the entire garden. Um, so what else was I going to do? Oh, prep. I'm not sitting underneath my green bean trellis right here. And underneath it is just wood chips. Nothing's ever been planted here before. So I'm going to dig out the wood chips and we're going to put in some uh, potting soil and then I'll amend it with a compost before we plant. So we can at least start that process today. So this is just one large cattle panel that's hooped over. And what I'm gonna be doing is using a square foot gardening template and planting one square foot of pole beans. Um, so I just need to clear back the mulch uh, for the square foot template. I need a different tool though. If you see these bricks over here too, are <clears throat> in this landscape fabric, I'm just not done with this area yet with respect to landscaping. So I'm gonna bring in wood chips to do the entryway. And uh, it won't be in my way so much. I'm sure I'll get comments, why move all this back? It looks like good breaking up. It's just an opinion that I have that I wanna make it very easy for my seeds, seedling roots, uh, to grab hold in soft soil. Um, so I don't want to make it too difficult for them. Okay, green bean bed number one is done. So I'll be planting green beans all around here. They will be trained up to grow over this. Very high intensity green bean planting. That is bed number two. So I am all ready for green bean planting. I think I've got a maybe 10 days or so till we plant those out. And this weekend is the big, huge push. Getting, uh, tomorrow we're getting the trellises set up for the tomatoes. And then Friday, getting the tomatoes actually planted. So, you know, I started the video off with different ways to use your compost making a compost slurry um, as either a root inoculant or a initial transplant booster. If you guys have done something similar to that, leave it in the comments below. I think it would certainly be worth sharing all of our experiences with each other. But thanks guys for coming out into the garden. I actually think I'm gonna wrap up this video transplanting some of my sunflowers out. So let's go grab those. Um, and we'll get some of those planted out here in the garden. So this is just, oh, you guys are so crooked. Sorry. 
All right, so this is just topsoil. Pretty sterile, nothing exciting about wanting to grow in this earth. So we're going to, um, my cardboard hasn't even been broken down yet. Um, probably make a foot, square foot. And now I'm going to take out the Lemon Queen. Let's see if I can gently pull these apart. Okay. So the Lemon Queen here. What is this one? Gold. I don't think sunflowers really like their roots disturbed, so hopefully they don't get too mad about this. Put a gold at the back, and then I want a white for the other side. Can't tell, this is, looks like a white. Let's see how they do. I'm just gonna give them each some compost. Boogity. Hi. Hi. Transplanting out the sunflowers. Nice. Me. Oh, wow. What is that? Wax? Wax and honey and sugar everywhere. Yeah. Cleaning out your bees? Yeah. Did you find any evidence of anything? No, just sadness. Just sadness. Like I pulled out this one frame and there's a cluster of like 20 bees all clustered on. And when you scraped them off, there was all the babies under them. Oh, really? That's sad. But I'm not finding a lot of bees either. So I really think the population just wasn't- As strong as you thought? As strong as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Let me get this out of the way so you guys can see. So that's how each corner is going to be and then in the center. Cute. <laughs> I'm just going to take some of my extra wood chips and mulch them just so it kind of helps keep this moisture retention. Oops. We just got a whole nother load of wood chips dropped off so I have plenty now. <laughs> <laughs> 